Hello! In this video we will see a bit about particles in Godot. Particles can be used to make effects like explosions, fire, rain, snow and many others. First, we need to know that we have two types of particle systems here. One that's managed by the CPU and another by the GPU. Normally, we will just use the GPU node and it's this node that we will cover in this video. But it's good to know that we have the CPU version alternative. This version is slower than the GPU version because here all the calculations are made by the CPU. So just use the CPU version if you need to give support to older devices. And in these cases, don't use many particles. And if you are using the GPU version and needs to add support to older devices, you can automatically convert it here. The idea here is to cover the different options of our particles so that you can, by your own, find exactly what you need when you are building your particles. First, the emitting option makes the particle system start to emit particles and the amount is how many particles are being emitted. We can't see any particle being emitted at the moment because we haven't defined a material for our particle. So here we have two options again. The first one is the shader material that, as the name says, is made with shaders. It's more complex and it will not be covered in this video. We'll cover the second one, that's the particles material, so let's add it. Now we can already see our particles. Let's just increase the scale a bit so that we can see them better. Ok, so the lifetime option is how long the particle will be alive. So, if we decrease the number, particle will die sooner, and if we increase it, it will be alive for a longer time. The one-shot option makes the particle system run just one time. It's useful for things like explosions that you really don't want to run in a loop. The preprocess option makes the particle start at the point that it would be if it has run for the given time. The speed scale makes the particles run faster or slower, and you can use zero to stop them. Explosiveness is used to define if all particles will be emitted at the same time. So if you put one, all of them will be emitted at the same time, like an explosion. But at this example, as all our particles are being emitted at the same point, we will just see one. Randomness randomizes the time between the creation of each particle. The fixed FPS option can be used if you want to define a fixed frame per second to your particles, like if you want them to be rendered 20 times per second or something like that. And the frac delta option makes the particle consider the delta to the calculations. Normally, it makes the particles run smoother. And here at drawing, we can define the size of this visibility rect. This rect defines if the particles will be rendered. If the rect is outside the view, no particles will be rendered. Oh, I forgot to speak about the textures. So here you can add a texture to be rendered at the particle, if you want to replace the squares. I will not do it here because that's not the point of this video and we have a lot of other things to look at. Let's just scale our particles a bit again. And now we can go back to the properties. Here at time, the lifetime random will randomize the lifetime of the particles. So, putting one here, the randomization will be maximized. Here at trail, we can make the particles follow a trail, but to test it, let's first change another properties. 
first we will turn off gravity. I think there's no need to explain this, right? Now we set a direction. That's the emission direction. At spread we can change the spread of the emission. And now we need to set an initial velocity to start the emission. And so we can see the particles flying up at the given velocity. We can still set some gravity to change the effect. And so we can change now the properties that we want to see the different results and see what's better to our effect. Here at the emission shape, we will define in which area the emission will start. Like we can define a box and here we need to imagine this box at the size that we put here. So like if we put 20 here at the x-axis, you will see that the emission will just be increased in the x-axis. But of course we can set the y-axis true and so the emission area will be like a box. And we can define another areas like a sphere. And now we can go back to our trail. Let's just increase the particles to 10. And now changing the divisor to 10, all our particles will be part of the trail. And so if you want two trails, we can divide it by 5. But let's put it back to 10 to test the other properties. At size modifier, we can define a curve to make our particles increase or decrease the size following this curve. At color modifier, we can set a gradient to change the color of the trail. And so we can play with the other properties to see the different results and see what's better to our effect. But let's reset our trio and look to the other properties. The next five properties are velocities and accelerations that are applied to the particle. I will not explain them in details, because this kind of property is really better to test by yourself, when you think your effect needs some adjust at acceleration or velocity. Then we have a dumping that applies friction to the particles and the angle that rotates the particle to the given angle at the emission. Scale to scale the particles. Color that you can use to set a color to the particles or define a gradient.
and the hue variation that, as the name says, applies hue variation to the color. This animation option is used if you are using an animated sprite to be the texture of your particle. And now to finish the video, we will just see how we can use a mask to define the position area of our particles. Okay, so this mask is just a simple line with some curves. Here you can choose if you want the particles to be emitted just at the border or at the entire sprite. I will increase the amount of particles here just to make it more visible. And we can see that they are exactly following the texture. And that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, if so, please consider subscribe, give a thumbs up, leave a comment, and thank you for watching, bye!